The latest breaking news story of the night is the Washington Post report that Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller is now investigating the president for possible obstruction of justice. President Trump said that he felt, quote, total and complete vindication after James Comey's testimony revealed that when he was FBI director, he told the president repeatedly that the president was not then under investigation. Some Republican senators and members of Congress suggested that the only important thing about former Director Comey's testimony was that he said the president was not under investigation. And so tonight is a major turning point for defenders of President Trump because they can no longer claim that the president is not under investigation. In response to the Washington Post story tonight, the president's legal defense team released a statement saying, the FBI leak of information regarding the president is outrageous, inexcusable, and illegal. But the Washington Post story does not indicate that the information that they used in that report comes from the FBI or was obtained from anyone in the special prosecutor's investigation. Joining us now, Devlin Barrett, reporter for The Washington Post. Uh, Devlin Barrett, I, I want to go for the moment, and I know you're not going to tell us who the sources are, but it, because the president's defense lawyers tonight responded with a direct attack on the FBI, uh, <clears throat> I just want to point out that in your article, the only phrase you use for sources are, it just says, official said, official said. Uh, the most detailed description of sources is when you say, five people briefed on the requests, uh, and that is the requests for testimony from uh, Dan Coats, the Director of National Intelligence, from Mike Rogers, the head of the National Security Agency, uh, and Richard Ledgett, who agreed to be interviewed, uh, that, that five people who knew about the requests for those, uh, re uh, for those people to be interviewed by the special prosecutor have spoken to the Washington Post. And it seems that those people could well exist outside the FBI, including as possible legal representatives or people who were uh, legal advisors who were consulted by those people who had those requests. Well, right. And, and frankly, we're not going to go beyond our language in the story <clears throat> that just says officials, precisely because people want to turn this conversation, in, frankly, into a discussion of, of leaks and sources and those sorts of things. Obviously, we care very much about protecting our sources and getting accurate information. And so we're, it, it's just not something that we can engage with. Whatever anyone says, whatever guesses anyone takes or, or accusations people make on that front, you know, to me, the important thing here is that there is a major development in this investigation, and that's worth knowing and worth sharing. What, what, is, what, is your, what would you say then to the president's lawyers saying that the FBI leak of information regarding the president is outrageous, inexcusable, and illegal? Well, I think that frankly speaks more to the very troubled relationship between the White House and the FBI and in a bigger picture matter with the intelligence community than it, than it frankly says about our story. You know, there has been, Comey's testimony showed just how fraught this relationship has been for months and months and months. I think, frankly, if you're asking me to say what that statement means, my only takeaway from that statement is it means that the distrust and suspicion didn't end when Comey was fired. I, I want to go to a, a line in your report uh, that isn't quite clear to me, uh, where mm -hmm. you say, uh, the interviews suggest that Mueller sees the attempted obstruction of justice question as more than just he said, he said dispute between the president and the fired FBI director. Uh, most people think uh, he said, he said is <clears throat> two people alone in a room with no way to corroborate uh, what each of them said. What are you right. suggesting in that line of your report? Well, the point is that after... Comey testified, a lot of people took from it, well, do you either believe Comey or do you believe Trump? But that's not how a prosecutor is going to look at this. They're going to, they're going to if, assuming, and, and we already know that Comey's turned over his notes of those conversations, but, you know, a prosecutor's job is, is then to go out and say, all right, well, what can we corroborate? What, what can we confirm through other people to make us believe one side or the other? And so that's part of what a good prosecutor does to see, you know, how much corroboration there is in, in the world beyond just the two people who had this dispute.
Uh, also in your report, it says that the investigation of the president as, as in a possible obstruction of justice case began days after Comey was fired on May 9th. And so, does that mean that it began before Robert Mueller became special prosecutor? Yes, I'm told that the gathering of potential evidence for, for this issue, this attempted obstruction of justice, in fact began before Mueller was announced as, this, as the special prosecutor. And the, uh, the, 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 the stage now is set for the special prosecutor to uh, ask for testimony uh, from the uh, director of national intelligence and, and the director of the NSA, as you say in your article. You also raise the possibility that the president will invoke executive privilege on this. Uh, which, as far as we can tell legally, would only delay it, uh, since the Nixon case seems to control the outcome here. Uh, is, is there? Do, do you have any uh, any other indications of ways that uh, the president uh, or the administration could prevent uh, them from testifying? Well, I think you're right in saying that you know most legal experts would tell you that trying to assert that in this setting would probably only lead to a delay, not an actual stoppage. There is an interesting, and, and Ari Melber in the previous show pointed to this, there is an, there is an interesting uh, piece of the U.S. v. Nixon uh, case where they talk about there is a potential military and diplomatic interest in, in, in asserting the privilege, but they decided that that interest didn't really assert itself here. Now, big picture. Could the administration at some point argue there is a military or national security interest in asserting the privilege over this specific issue? Well, obviously, we know national security issues sort of are, are woven throughout a lot of the issues that Mueller is looking at here. So I, I personally wouldn't rule it out. I'm also personally not a lawyer. So uh, I think to some degree we have to wait and see how that plays out. The, the point of us explaining that in the story is really just to flag that Look, it's possible, there's reason to think it would not succeed, but, you know, a lot of life is unpredictable. Well, uh, Devlin, we just happen to have a couple of lawyers with us who are <laughs> eager to join the discussion with Thank us. Thank God. So let's bring those in. Uh, we're joined now by Richard Painter, professor of law at the University of Minnesota and former chief ethics lawyer for President George W. Bush. He's also the vice chair of the Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. Also with us, Ron Klain, former chief of staff to Vice Presidents Joe Biden and Al Gore, and a former senior advisor, senior aide to President Obama. He is also a former chief counsel of the Senate Judiciary Committee. And Ron Klain, I just want to get your reaction to the Washington Post report tonight uh, that the president now is under investigation by the special prosecutor in a possible obstruction of justice case. You know, Lawrence, I know you're a history buff. It's time to get out the old Watergate vocabulary book because we saw two of them tonight. You know, Trump's lawyer's uh, de defense here, the, the spokesperson's statement that this is an FBI leak is what we used to call a non-denial denial. He doesn't deny that the president's under investigation because he can't. The president is under investigation. And the second thing in the reports out tonight Ron, goes Ron, back. can I stop you there for one sure. second? Would <laughs> the president have had an indication that he is under investigation before this report in the Washington Post tonight? Well, Lawrence, perhaps not formally, but I do think it sheds a light on all these rumors the past weekend that the president was thinking about trying to fire Bob Mueller. Bob Mueller, because what the report suggests is that the FBI, the, the special counsel, has been reaching out to members of the Trump administration to set up their testimony uh, in this matter, uh, Coates, Rogers, others. And that word could have easily filtered back to the president, and that might be well what had fueled his uh, his temper tantrum over the weekend, over the past couple days, of, of, of potentially firing Bob Mueller. So I do think probably word of this filtered back to the White House before tonight's report. Richard Painter, I would think, without anyone saying specifically to the White House or the president that the president's under investigation, that a simple request from the special prosecutor for, for example, any tapes that might exist of the Comey conversation, a request like that would indicate we are investigating the president's conversation with Comey, which means we are investigating possible obstruction of justice. Well, absolutely. And uh, I think this was inevitable. Uh, the president uh, literally confessed obstruction of justice in front of the Russian ambassador. He's been talking about this uh, with the press. And if he fired James Comey uh, simply in order to obstruct the Russia investigation, that in and of itself could very well be obstruction of justice. So I don't think any competent prosecutor in Bob Mueller's position or the FBI before Mueller even came on 
uh, uh, could fail to follow up with an investigation of whether President Trump is obstructing justice in connection with the Russia investigation. And that's exactly what's been going on. Uh, so this is an interesting development, but it's an inevitable development. We knew it was going to happen. It's part of Bob Mueller's job to look into this. Uh, the notion that somehow it leaked from the FBI uh, is something we all knew was going to happen anyway. I, I very much doubt anybody the FBI talked about it. It's likely to people who were contacted by the FBI or new people contacted by the FBI talked about it. Uh, this is not a classified, uh, this is not classified information. We shouldn't be focusing on the leak here. Uh, if there was a leak, if, uh, the real issue is, did the President of the United States obstruct justice in connection with an investigation of Russian espionage inside the United States? And if so, that is a very, very serious situation. It obviously should be at the very top of Bob Mueller's list of things to address in his investigation. Uh, Ryan Klein, let's go back to the legal question that uh, uh, Devlin uh, yeah. brought up to usher in your introduction, which is, which is this question of, do you see any room in the Nixon case uh, that would allow for an exception uh, involving national security that the president might be able to invoke in terms of his conversations with the director of national intelligence and the director of the NSA uh, that, that the special prosecutor, the, the conversations the special yeah. prosecutor might be interested in, which are the ones reportedly where the president asked them to intervene with the FBI director on the Russia investigation and intervene on the investigation of Michael Flynn. Yeah, Lawrence, I have no doubt Donald Trump and his lawyers will throw everything at the wall, but that won't stick here. This is not a conversation about national security. This was not a conversation about what to do about Russia. This was not a conversation about keeping the American people safe. This was a conversation about Donald Trump asking intelligence officials to try to stop an FBI investigation of someone, Michael Flynn, for failing to make appropriate disclosures about uh, lobbying funds and other funds that he took. This is, this is nowhere near the kind of exception the Supreme Court uh, carved out in U.S. v. Nixon for things that are actually about national security. This really is back to what happened in the Nixon administration. You played these tapes on your program a couple nights ago of, of, the, of, the, White House, of, the, of the president's men conspiring to try to get the CIA to stop the FBI. This really is the 21st century version of that. It's not national security. It's an effort to block a criminal investigation. Uh, Devlin Barrett, uh, the Daily Beast is reporting tonight that sources inside the White House uh, are blaming the president himself for bringing this investigation, the instruction of just investigation, on himself uh, because of his both his public statements and some other things. Was that your sense in uh, the work you were doing for this, the breaking news story that you created tonight? Was that that this began uh, with the president? Well, certainly, and I, and I think you know you have to look at the. I mean, this is sort of obvious to say, but you have to look at the firing of Comey itself seems by all accounts to have been something driven by the president himself. His own words put a lot of the evidence on the table here, and that's, you know, deeply problematic for defending him as this process goes forward. But, you know, he has shown time and time again that he doesn't let stuff go, and he wants to say what he believes and what he does, and he wants to be, in some ways, his own spokesman. Uh, you know, I think you could make an argument that that has not served him well as this Russia case has gone on. Look where we started. We started almost a year ago with an investigation into were Russian operatives in communication with anyone associated with the Trump campaign. And now look where we are. We're in an investigation of did the president himself commit any kind of crime. That is an es a pretty serious escalation, I would argue, in what's being looked at. And, you know, that's about fundamentally his own conduct, what he did or didn't do. And uh, Richard Painter, the, the, the president's uh, behavior here uh, has, has changed the shape of the investigation, as, as, as De uh, Devlin just said, not just from campaign and transition interactions, but now what about obstruction of justice of that investigation of campaign and transition interactions, which all makes you wonder about what is it, what is it that the Trump administration, the president in particular, uh, didn't want people to find in the original investigation because that's what he was getting in the way of. Well, yes, we should remember that General Flynn 
uh, was going to uh, ask. He wanted immunity, and he was going to roll over on people. He wants to provide testimony. He basically publicly announced his desire for immunity. Yes, yeah. and he's going to give testimony. He's going to rat other people out. This is an investigation that's critical to our national security because this is about Russian espionage in the United States and who assisted the Russians in conducting espionage in the United States, who lied about their contacts with the Russians, who took money from the Russians and lied about it, General Flynn, and who he's going to rat out in this. And it is a very serious situation uh, when we have uh, the president trying to obstruct an investigation of who is helping the Russians commit espionage in the United States and disrupt their political system. Uh, so I, I think this is critically important that we go forward with this. And, and if, if I could just jump in, I, you know, I think we have to be a little careful in, in assuming which way Flynn's going to go. I think I agree that Flynn is a central figure in all of this, because not just because of what he does, but what the president may or may not have done for him. But I think we have to be a little careful because, I, to be honest, the, the cynical old reporter in me thinks when Flynn makes that offer of immunity, what he's really doing is saying, give me my immunity and then I'll just tell you everything was great and, and I'm skate out of here. Um, you know, I think there's a lot more to play out there and I, I think we have to, but I do agree that he's a very important player in this whole thing. Ron Klain, a quick word on the Flynn immunity request and how immunities are granted in cases like this. Yeah, a savvy prosecutor like Bob Mueller is not going to give him immunity without Flynn first making a proffer about what he would say if he would get immunity. And so I, I don't think anyone's going to be uh, flim flam, flim flammed here about the immunity grant. It, yeah, it is also important to remember there is a story out tonight also about money laundering in this investigation. That's a second front. Follow the money, an old Watergate phrase. That's coming back too. Yeah, that is part of uh, Devlin's reporting tonight, which we're going to get to. Uh, Devlin, your report is so full, uh, we cannot cover it in one segment. We're going to be covering some of the element, other elements of it later in the program. Devlin Barrett, Ron Klein, Richard Painter, thank you all for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.